name is Aminata Kamara. I'm regional cultural leader and development gateway, and today we are with Valerie. Can you introduce yourself? Okay, thank you, Aminata. Like you said, I am Fonari Sonde Okimaba, uh, a Nigerian, and uh, I'm a seat expert. I am a PhD in uh, seed science and technology. I work with the National Agricultural Seed Council in Nigeria as a senior technical advisor to the Director General of the Seed Council. So I also work in the past as the regional seed food, uh, specialist for the West African Seed Program in uh, Koraf, in Dakar. I'm also uh, I work with the Director General of the Seed Council as a senior technical to the DG. I also did the image project in Nigeria. The image is institutionalizing monitoring of copyright adoption using genotyping. It's a BMGF funded project. And I'm also the con topic team lead for the uh, PVP topic under the collaborative program, which is uh, under the Nigerian Netherlands Seed Partnership. It's a uh, joint uh, program. Also, the Diagra grants that helped in introducing the seed codex, the smart authentication and quality assurance vehicles for Nigeria. What is your background in the seed sector and what do you do in this space? Okay, uh, I am uh, uh, by training a seed uh, science and technologist. I have a PhD in uh, seed science and technology. And I've been in the seed system in Nigeria for the past uh, 17, going to 18 years. Uh, I work as a, currently as a senior technical advisor to the Director General of the Seed Council. That is the government agency that regulates the seed industry. Uh, previous uh, years, I've worked within the region as a regional seed specialist for the West African Seed Program that was uh, domiciled in Senegal and Koraf have uh, consulted similarly for different uh, organizations uh, in the seed space, also particularly for the SIDAN, uh, the Seed Entrepreneur Association of Nigeria. I am uh, a member of the technical committee of the African uh, uh, African Seeds, which is also uh, an African Union organization that also I also work, uh, of course, as a, a consultant, sort of fantasy, and mm -hmm. even the access to seed index. Mm -hmm. I'm also on the uh, committee that helps in you know, getting information uh, for the seed industry. Mm -hmm. I do have other caps. Mm -hmm. I have uh, led various uh, initiative and grants that have helped to shape the Nigerian seed industry, particularly on grants that help introduce the seed codex, mm -hmm. which is the electronic authentication uh, quality assurance uh, scheme for the country. And also the country did for a program called IMAGE, institutionalizing monitoring of crop variety adoption using genotyping, where we are trying to monitor adoption mm -hmm. of you know, the output of research so that uh, we can advise and inform donors mm -hmm. that their money is uh, actually going into the right places and the varieties developed and getting into the hands of the farmers. So this, uh, among others, and let me also say that I currently am championing the introduction of the land right protection law into Nigeria and uh, with the uh, assent of Mr. President to the PVP bill uh, in sometime June 2021, we now have the law and we are working towards becoming a member of the International Union for the Protection of the uh, New Variety of Plants. Thank you. Thank you. So, why the agricultural sector? Is it like a passion for you? Or because you're not going to expand in the art sector, in the sea sector specifically? Yeah, basically, you know, when I was uh, growing up in the secondary school, I discovered I love agriculture. It was one of the best uh, you know, subjects for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when I graduated, 
started and um, I wanted to go to the university, which was then not as easy as it is getting into the university, it was mm-hmm. difficult. So I had to enter through a program, we call it Prenin, like a pre um, post secondary school, and we are like, uh, they tell you your name is written in bed, so you are not yet a student. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to, you know, enter through that form into the university and uh, although being among one of the best uh, performing students the university then decided okay we are not going to put students where they want this is a specialized university there are some new courses we want people to also study and we don't want anybody there so i was put in a department of plant reading and seed technology and i was like wow what is this a lot of my colleagues wanted to change their courses I assisted some, and when I told my uh, those assisting, I wanted to change to them. They were like, "Oh, it's late. Why didn't you put yourself first? Yeah. So I found myself in a department of, that I don't know anything about. But I took the decision. Well, if everybody is going uh, the way of uh, food science and Greek economics, let me see. Let me have a niche. Let me see what's in this field. Uh, today I'm happy I took that decision because I'm impacting you know my country contributing to food security and ensuring that farmers get the best quality seeds, which is the most important input that any agricultural venture needs. Excellent, thank you. So, um, even though you are not familiar with the dashboard, so how will you use it? Or how will you expect to use the dashboard, the side dashboard? Well, uh, the TASAI uh, dashboard, I may not be familiar with it, but I am familiar with using you know, other dashboards uh, in different uh, forms or mm-hmm. on different topics. I am sure that the TASAI dashboard will not be different from that. Mm-hmm. It will you know, avail us to have uh, better and uh, prompt information you know, when we need it. And it makes the, the work easy, it makes comparison between uh, countries and it also helps you to also uh, have a link that you can you know, share with uh, your seniors, the, those above you to say, okay, this is what I'm talking, you can also see it for yourself. Exactly. In Africa, seeing is believing and uh, it's what we see that you know moves us. Mm-hmm. So if you are talking to a, a very senior colleague about you know the, the report or the outcomes of the study of TASAI and you are talking this physically, they will not really you know believe you. If you just send a link and say, sir, check the link and you see what I'm saying. When they see for themselves and you tell them do this and they can do and you know get um, uh, what they want, I think this will impact uh, the system significantly. In your work, which indicators or data do you find most useful to use? Yeah, it, it, you know, in the previous uh, story, the result of TASA, some uh, data, particularly at regard um, the number of breeders, for example, has helped, you know, in actually speaking to policy makers that we need more breeders. It has helped also to speak to um, the donors to sponsor more people to study breeding because uh, we have a little number of breeders. And also the, 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 the number of companies, you know, the, the rate at which companies are also, you know, getting breeders on their, on their payroll, you know. Uh, we were able to show that if any serious company is uh, serious in business, they should have, you know, breeders, they should have all these expertise. And the TASAI report has also been able to show that this gap and it has helped some companies also to, you know, key into this. One other area is the gender lens, you know, where we now know that there is little, you know, participation of women in seed space and this is one thing we are working on and trying to push so that in the future the story will be different. I can talk about more but I think I should just stop with those. And what kind of decision are you taking um, based on this data? Yeah, we, we take uh, of course policy decisions uh, particularly like uh, in dealing with uh, you know companies one example is the aspect of counterfeiting, you know, faking of seeds. Uh, the TASA report brought 
this out clearly some years back and it was one of what helped to push for donor intervention you know to say we need to you know stem or stop the uh, the, the, the the nefarious element from this defrauding farmers and that led to the introduction of the seed codex there are other things that you know the tassai resort has brought out to the fore um, like i mentioned the plant variety protection mm -hmm. it's one clear gap you know in our seed space and because of the report we've been able to go to government and say yes we need support this law must be put in place even though there were a lot of people that were anti the law but eventually we got the, the years of the excellence in Mr. President we had support of our chief executives and every stakeholder we got the law in place. So these are type of decisions that the TASA report you know impact the system to do. So before you were using PDF reports to analyze data and take decision. So now we have the dashboard and um, this index has been kind of um, digitalized um, and you have like tables, you have a list of information and then you can analyze by doing cross-cutting analysis. So how this can help you in your work um, and also in your analysis and decision making? Yeah, for me, you know, I'm very enthusiastic to, to start playing with the dashboard. Yeah. I won't say using it because uh, when you, 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 you get familiar with it, many things you cannot imagine can, you know, come to the fore. Yeah. So I, I see more flexibility, I see more um, promptness in even getting information much more easier than it was with, with the PDF uh, uh, version. So I'm um, just uh, waiting to for the launch so that we can you know hit the ground running and then maybe next year when you ask this question again I'll be able to give exactly. you the examples of how this 